Hello everyone, my name is Iris Franz with Johnny Wang Room. Today we are going to study Slutsky equation with calculus and this is from Variant Chapter 8 Appendix. So we know that initially we have a regional bundle x1 bar, x2 bar and we have an initial or original price vector p1 bar and p2 bar. And this is our original income. So now there is a change in price. We can define a Slavsky demand function, S1S, that gives me the amount of good one that I'm going to consume given the price vector of the new price and a budget that is just enough for me to buy the original bundle. But we know that we're not going to buy the bundle, we're going to buy bundle Y. So we call the Slavsky demand function, which is just the original demand function given the new price and a budget that allows me to buy the original bundle given the new price. So we can call that N prime, which is this line here. And I'm going to take the derivative, a partial derivative, with respect to P1 on both sides. So on the left hand side, you can say I take a um, derivative with respect to the Slavsky demand function. So that will be wrong x1s, wrong p1. And on the right hand side, you can see that we have an ordinary demand function with both p1 and my budget m in there. So when I take the partial derivative with respect to p1, I will have to use a chain rule here. That's the reason why you see two terms here. After you take derivative with respect to p1, you also need to do that with respect to m. And you can see that n is a function of p1, so you also take the derivative with respect to this term, and then you get x1 bar here. That's the reason why I have two terms. And then you can rearrange your term. So you can see I have a color code here. Here is a total effect, is a sum of substitution effect, and income effect. So you'll be asking, hmm, why is there a negative sign here? Let me explain. So suppose the price of good one goes down, so that you can see that substitution effect is always negative. What does that mean? That means, hey, if your price of good one goes down, then substitution effect is going to be asked you to buy more of good one. That's why this is always negative. This is the um, substitution effect. What about income effect? Now, let's assume that good one is a normal good. So when the price of good one goes down, you'll feel that, hey, I'm relatively wealthier, and good one is a normal good. So income effect is going to ask you to buy more. So when income goes up, remember, we feel as if our income has gone up, right? So when income goes up, I'm going to buy more. So this term is positive. So you have something negative minus something positive. So the result will be even more negative, meaning when the price of good one goes down, you will definitely buy more good one. So that's when the good is a normal good, when those substitution effect and income effect, they're going to go in the same direction. So I hope this helps and I'll see you next time.